By an unlikely trick of the wind and a flat Cascadian shadow not of light but of rain, an improbable landscape lies baking and barren in dry desert air. Silence, broken only by drafty whisper or rattle of warning. Desiccated crenellations toss and roll horizon to horizon in gritty waves, an ocean of sand and rock and featureless isolation. And yet, and yet in its singular essence, a strange and terrible beauty emerges. Beauty based not on a sweet and gentle disposition, but a more elemental inner beauty, born of harsh reality and a wisdom won on survival's hard scrabble edge. Beneath the sun of good grace and temperate generosity stretches the Palouse, a bountiful and beneficent land, where the wild, lavish growth of the coastal jungle gives gentle way to a more systematic and organized germination. Here is practiced that most ancient and most human of arts, cultivation. Cultivation of crops, cultivation of values, cultivation of an exacting yet rewarding way of life that stretches back to the very dawn of man.
Here, roots grow deep and strong in this wide and fertile valley, still named in the language of its earliest inhabitants. Here, the precious ore of humanity runs through the soil in rich seams. Here, the fruits of labor are harvested from the branches of apple trees and the stalks of winter wheat. Here, hymns are sung on Sundays and remembered all week long. Here the world is as temporal as the next harvest and as eternal as heaven. These are the great arteries of Washington, moving in serpentine canyons the lifeblood of a state. They prowl in perpetual restlessness, forever captive to the irresistible force of gravity, sentenced to an unstoppable course of dizzying twists and turns, imprisoned in solid rock, forever flowing, calling no place home. rivers of destiny, holding in their slippery embrace the ultimate fate of the lands they visit, master and slave, served and servant. Though imprisoned themselves by canyon walls and muddy banks, they are, in fact, liberators, as highways, as power generators, as sources of life-giving irrigation, and as shiny, liquid playgrounds.
In some ways, it's almost as if time stands still here in the land of the Pondere. In some ways, the echoes of the past don't seem like echoes at all, but more like invitations to saddle up and ride the land, ride it as our forebears rode it, ride it with the spirit and abandon of an era less restricted, less conformed. The pleasures of the Pont are the pleasures of simplicity. There are no fences. Here on this rolling frontier, life seems reduced to the elemental sensations of sun on the shoulders and wind in the face, the basic scents of leather and sweat and meadow flowers, and the instinctual attraction of boundless, measureless freedom. This land is the masterpiece of creation. A canvas splashed with impossible colors. A timeless symphony for an ageless orchestra. This land whispers words too beautiful to write, sings hymns too heavenly to hear, thinks thoughts too splendid to contemplate. This land is a land of dreams, conjured up in an instant of perfect sleep from which we pray never to awaken.
Washington the Beautiful. It slips silently from countless blinds, soars breathlessly on silken wings, and leaps joyously from behind endless stately stone walls. Washington the Beautiful, a never-ending journey, a book in which each page is prelude, each image a prism through which to view the next. Washington the Beautiful, a quest without a conclusion, where the soul of beauty is eternal and the essence of beauty is beauty discovered. Thank you.